Yes. Hello and welcome to the show. Welcome to Strong Tower Mental Health Podcast. I'm very excited to have Jared Lasky with me, Adventures in the Spirit. Hello, Jared. Hey, good morning or good afternoon to you. I'm not sure which, but Heidi, it's a pleasure to be on. Yeah, it is such a pleasure to have you. Um, I'm going to introduce Jared. Him and his wife, Rochelle, have a ministry called Fireborn Ministries. You can actually find them at firebornministries.com. And they really just desire for people to see Jesus awaken this generation to the power of the Holy Spirit. He is very much about people knowing the power of the Holy Spirit. Um, He served in the United States Marine Corps from 2006 to 2011, um, and he, again, has just a power, or excuse me, a heart and a passion to awaken this generation. Um, He's also done some work writing um, for Charisma Magazine, AG News, um, and also has a podcast through Charisma, so I started out by saying Adventures in the Spirit, and that's basically you, Jared. You are just all about adventures now, and that's what you do. You just operate in adventures in the Holy Spirit. That's right. Wherever we go, whatever the Holy Spirit does, whether it's on vacation or missions or through the media, just it's a lifestyle. So it's a lot of fun. Yeah. So I'm, I'm excited to have you on and because your story is very unique um, because you did, you served in the Marine Corps and you actually had PTSD. Mm-hmm. And, um, so it's actually why I'm having you on is because of your healing story, which is very powerful. Um, but before kind of sharing that, could you share kind of before you knew Jesus and then how, how you kind of, you don't have to say all the details about PTSD, but kind of how that came about and how you, the symptoms that you had, could you share that for oh, our yeah. listeners? Totally. So I, I was born and raised in, uh, Bible believing church, but not in a Holy Spirit empowered church. And God bless them. Uh, they're the foundations of my Christian faith. But as a teenager, I didn't serve the Lord. Um, uh, I just was totally, but he was talking to me. He was talking to me through dreams at the age of 11 or 12. And, you know, I was kind of confused, but I didn't serve the Lord as a teenager. I did a lot of partying, got in a lot of trouble. But uh, through a series of events, um, I ended up. Uh, you know, getting radically, having a radical encounter with God when I was 17. I had had a burst appendix and I was in the hospital for five days. I had to face a lot of, you know, my own mortality at that age. And I encountered the presence of Jesus for the first time in my life. I felt the hand, his, his hand on my head. I felt the love and the power, mm. the electricity of his love and grace. Um, and I knew that that was, that was real. So fast forward, you know, some months later, um, I gave up, I, the, the party in, I gave up that lifestyle. I had to jump all in with Jesus because I knew it was either Jesus or I was, I was going to die. So I got into YWAM. Youth can, I, can I ask you first yeah. how you knew that? How did you know that it was Jesus or I was going to die? Oh man. Um, because I'd had an understanding of, of the scripture. I'd had a Christian faith. I mean, my family still made us go to church every week <laughs> and I'd be hung over. You know, but I, I knew that this was the presence of Jesus. So uh, when I was in the hospital, uh, I'd had a had this pocket New Testament, the Gideons, God bless them. Uh, and I would, while I'm waking up, I'd start reading the pocket New Testament, the Gideon Bible, and I could feel my spirit soar. I could feel the life that it was bringing to my spirit. Uh, and, you know, that's, I, I, I felt the hand of Jesus on my head. I felt this, you know, kind of electric love, you know, uh, my vocabulary can't fully describe the presence, but you knew and, it in here. Like you, you oh, knew it. I knew it. Yeah. And I, the, the scripture was coming alive and I'm, mm-hmm. I'm talking to Jesus, yeah. you know, cause I, you know, I was getting to know him. And yeah. so, um, you know, I, I just, I just knew, Hey, it's Jesus. And, and I, looking back, I know that that's the power of the Holy spirit. The Holy spirit's our comforter. He's our guide. So he's guiding me to Jesus. So, it's just like, there's no other directions. Like this is the way right. and Jesus is the way. Yeah. Uh, and so then that's how that had started. But um, yeah. Yeah. So then I, I went into YWAM and then mm-hmm. uh, went to Bible college, got married. Um, and then I went to the Marine Corps. <laughs> so that's, you know, where the PTSD had, had taken place. I went to Iraq in 2000, 2006, 2007. I was a radio operator with the Second Battalion, Eighth Marines, who third Infantry Battalion in the Marine Corps, uh, went to Iraq, and then in two so oh seven oh eight, 
yeah, 2007, 2008, mm -hmm. and then in 2009 went to Afghanistan, and Afghanistan was pretty rough. Um, and uh, you know, so we're all connecting online, you know, <laughs> but there's still these things like, hey, you know, Afghanistan was pretty rough. Operation Kanjari, mm -hmm. you know, uh, extend the patrol baseline, which there's Afghanistan and Helmand Province. But there's kind of like the border on our maps, but really there's this invisible border that was, you know, further within the country. So that's where the bad guys were, the Taliban. Yeah. And so we're to extend or basically go into, you know, the, this patrol baseline and extend the, the border uh, by like 20 miles and uh, big helicopter assault since largest since Vietnam, all that, you know, um, and uh, we're in it. Mm. And we'd kind of, I, I guess you could say, liberated these people, if you will, so that they could vote for the summer of decision of 2009. Yeah. Some of these people were voting for the first time in years. Wow. But that whole deployment was pretty rough. Out, and uh, out of my, my platoon, because I was in the personal security detail protecting uh, our, our lieutenant colonel, our battalion commander, also General Petrace and other people who'd come into the area of operation or Senator John Kerry or other senators and dignitaries. You know, we protected them as yeah. they came through. But my platoon, we did everything. We went to the front, we went to the rear, we wow. traveled out of a, my platoon of 26, 16 had been blown up by an IED. Now, they'd, well, none of them died, you know, but, uh, you know, that's still... You know, no one likes that percent. <laughs> you know, yeah. so so mm -hmm. we're in combat. You know, my first time in a, a in contact with the enemy was June twenty second of two thousand nine. Very prolonged firefight. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, very prolonged firefight. I've written some about it, mm -hmm. uh, but I think someday soon uh, there might be a screenplay about all this stuff. But I'm I'm just gonna prophesy that right now. Yeah, but, sounds but, good. I can't wait to see it. <laughs> but then I I returned home you know, day before Thanksgiving of, mm -hmm. of 2009. I met my twins who were about six months old at that time for the first time. Mm -hmm. um, and I was just giddy. I was, I was, you know, it was like a honeymoon phase, right? Mm -hmm. For like 60, 70 days. And then around soon after Christmas, things just weren't clicking right. And uh, then the new year and it, and just, I started, there's a lot of anger. And then mm -hmm. There's one point where um, we would gotten back from Christmas vacation. And so it's probably early January. And I'm just, I'm looking for this book that I'd left behind in a certain spot. Like I left it probably next to my bed. Um, my wife tells me it's boxed up in, in the shed. So I, I go in the shed, but I'm, that's just kind of when like all this stuff just started coming and I can't describe it, but I knew it was dark. It was sinister. It was emotional, uh, perhaps spiritual, you know, um, and, but I'm not going to say PTSD is all spiritual. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's the, okay. It's not. I mean, some people are like, all you got to do is deal with this demon. When you got it no, out. no, 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 no. Right. This is, this is my body's reaction to trauma. This is yes. adrenal fatigue. This is all kinds of stuff that yeah. all these elements that, that, that come into play that have now just crashed, made me crash and burn. And I remember my wife coming to me in the shed and I'm sitting there and she looks at me and I look at her and I, in my mind, I'm like, Jared, something's wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, something's wrong. Mm -hmm. And I think from that point on, um, it, it, it was a roller coaster. I mean, anger, rage, uh, anxiety, depression, mm -hmm. um, there's some, you know, there was some suicidal ideation or not really suicidal, but more like, Hey, I would rather be dead. Yeah. Like you kind of don't want to be here. Like, yes. Just don't... like, Hey, it'd be better. And this is weird. Like it would be better if a sniper shot me and I'm in the United States of America. I'm like, I would be great if I'm driving down the road and the sniper takes me out and my family gets the, the soldier's life insurance or for me and the Marine you yeah. know, life insurance, you know, yep. and it was this huge. And, and I, you know, we, I feel bad about it now, but I, you know, some kid, we get these new joins, these new mm -hmm. Marines would join our unit. And if they did something wrong, I was blasting them in their face or if they rolled their eyes or something, just these triggers, just, you know, or even the smells, you know, there's like smells of death, you know, I just smelling something that died or something. It's like, it just triggers me to when 
you know, right. well, because PTSD, yeah, PTSD stands for post traumatic stress disorder. So you're having stress from trauma, and your body just automatically goes into this that place. So it's it's like you can't even help it. It just happens and it's an automatic response. And like the thoughts that you had were not yours. Like that's what the enemy the enemy puts in those thoughts, but the open door came from the trauma. It was like, oop, here's a little door. And in came all all these swooping thoughts, the, you know, the emotions that you're dealing with. And how how did you sleep at that time? Well well, the Not first few weeks, it, it was, I was lo so looking forward to my bed, but I couldn't sleep in the bed. I had to sleep on the, on the, yeah. the floor. You know, I had friends yeah. who were sleeping in their, they still, they brought their pup tents back from deployment Yep. and they're sleeping in their pup tents still, you mm -hmm. know, that place of security that was on deployment. But yeah. in time I was able to, you know, um, start sleeping, but I had some insomnia and then the PTSD went on for years. I mean, I eventually got diagnosed. Um, yeah. You know, uh, there's, the, that's a whole other story about how, I kind of got revealed that I was messed up, you know, but, you know, um, yeah, medication came, mm -hmm. honestly, lots of medications, probably too many medications. You know, we call it the combat cocktail. I think there was one point where I was on 15 different prescriptions. Wow. Uh, but then we were in a loving church. You know, I, I eventually uh, was honorably discharged in 20, 2011. Yep. but I was serving at a church and serving was kind of healing me. I started yeah. youth pastoring, uh, very amazing church, graceful yeah. people, spirit empowered people who, you know, all kind of understood, Hey, this, we know that this is what Jared's got, and, and, but we're working so with you, him. Right. So you were in a loving environment, like Big the time. environment that you're in allowed you to really let God come in and really heal you to heal. And, but they're also a church that told us, Hey, whatever, you know, um, just be upfront about what you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Wow. Because churches tend to try to hide things. Okay. Yeah. And that's where we get in trouble. Like when something gets exposed, you know, boom. Oh, you know, like now we got to kick this guy out. You know, I no, know. no, no, no. Listen, uh, what we need to do is heal with one another. Yes. And, and oh keep my gosh. going, going through this together as a community. Yes. Uh, totally then, agree with you. Uh, in time, you know, I started weaning myself off medications in time. Mm -hmm. I, I, we're talking years. Mm -hmm. And then um, I was down to one medication by uh, 2018. Mm -hmm. And my wife was an MBA student at Regent University at that time. And, she, you know, she got information about this weekend retreat by Father Nigel Mumford. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I, we end up going and I, I was aware of what he does. You know, I was already in the prophetic ministry. I was growing. I already understood sozo inner healing. I was trained in this stuff, but I still had my stuff. <laughs> and I jumped in head first. I just jumped in. I was like, hey, this is, you know, this is, you know, I, I'm going to deal with this. I'm going to be the one, first one who prays for, talks to all that. So I'm just like jumping in. And uh, there's this point, and I'll, I'll share this on your podcast because I've shared it before. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so I had this one point that this memory, if you will. Um, and it's not that we're digging stuff up. It's that this was something I was stuck on. And it's like, I knew I had to deal with this. So I, uh, I, I remember this time that, that I watched this 17 year old Taliban bleeding out. Mm -hmm. So he, there was a, a firefight earlier that we were, we were around. <clears throat> then, then time this, this vehicle pulls up with this guy. They say that they're civilians caught in the crossfire, but it actually turns out, you know, their hands tested positive for, for gunpowder and, uh, Cordite, you know, um, so it's a 17 year old Taliban, but he's bleeding and I'm just watching him and I was just numb. I was just so numb. And here I was a Christian. I was leading a Bible study. God was using me to interpret dreams in Iraq and Afghanistan. Everybody knew this. They called me preach. That was my call sign was preach. They all knew I was a preacher, you know, um, and yet here I am numb. And there, that's a moral injury. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm like, I I've got no love for, I got nothing for this person, you know, like I'm just cold. Mm -hmm. um, so this is my stuck point when I, I went to the retreat. I was like, I've dealt with all this other stuff, but there's this one thing. And then, you know, I get prayed for in, in, <clears throat> in the prayer, Jesus mm -hmm. or the medic became Jesus. Wow. You know, because in the memory, there's a medic working and there's a team of people, but in, in the, this thing, in this vision, yeah, the medic becomes Jesus, looks at me with his loving eyes and says, I see you and I love you. 
and I've had supernatural encounters before, but this was just like so just peaceful, just wow. boom. It, it was like a weight lifted. Mm. I got up. Within a few weeks, I realized I'm not taking my medication. I'm not depressed anymore. Uh, okay, I start, I start working out. I start feeling good. Um, and then, uh, I, you know, I still had a little bit of, bit of an anxiety, just a little bit. But I was like, hey, I know that keto, the keto diet that works for these kids I've worked with who've got autism and Asperger's and other neurological disorders. So I was like, oh, and my best friend's daughter, um, she had... Uh, epilepsy so she was keto and it helps her keto uh, helps her neurologically so i was like i'll try keto boom anxiety's gone i've pretty much been keto most of the time the last few years um so i got in shape i dropped 60 pounds and here's another part of the story heidi is that my story ended up on charisma and in joan hunter's book mm -hmm. miracles for veterans joan hunter is a great woman god yeah. bless her and <laughs> so it's in miracles for veterans but what people didn't know is that I went back to Afghanistan as a private military contractor. And, and that's, that's a whole other story. But I went back, even though I had in 2020, we're talking recently, and I got home January 7th, January 8th, you know, when that DC thing was, so I'm flying into DC. Uh, but like, I went back, not only just to make money, but to see if I had anything to deal with. Wow. But I'm, when I got there, when I flew into Kabul, um, September of last of 2020, um, you know, we get out, we jump in a, a helicopter, and then we were flying to the U.S. Embassy, and the the doors open. It's like this opening in the back, right? And we're all buckled up, so we're safe. <laughs> I know civilians are like, "Wait, what? <laughs> How does that?" Work? So anyway, <laughs> but I'm looking out, and I'm like praying over the city, Kabul. I'm just praying for revival. I'm just like, mm -hmm. God store them bring life to them you know churches you know revivals and i was like i've got nothing but love in my heart for these oh, people so nothing but love uh, and so then i'm like i'm like man dude i'm i'm healed completely and so then i'm at the u.s embassy with contractors doing my job and um i'm helping lead a bible study and discipling people and people are you know some of those contractors are getting into my e-courses on charisma i mean dude so then, you know, that's, that's a heal, you know? Um, yeah. That's, what, that's, what, beautiful off, that's Jesus. Com what beautiful confirmation that you had by going back there. Not everybody gets that, but the courage you had, Jared, the courage you had to go back there in, in therapy world, we'd call that exposure therapy. I don't yeah. actually do that. I do different types of trauma work, um, but that's a type of therapy that their therapists will actually prescribe. And you literally did it for yourself. Like you put yourself back in there to say, to see, like, I'm completely healed. Yeah. Yeah. And sure. It was, it was quiet for the most part. We did get rocketed once, mm -hmm. you know, it was in the news out here or in the U S you know, November 21st, you know, like ISIS, they now call them ISIS K. Um, but like, Hey, you know, like, you know, Jesus is with me. I'm, you know, there, you know, during that time, um, doing a job, uh, but loving the contractors even and being a light at the U S embassy. Um, I think people should be encouraged. There are Bible studies there or what well, was the embassy. <laughs> I mean, they're not there anymore in Kabul because of, you know, the, the exit, but yeah, man, it's, it's amazing. You know, it's, it's all Jesus. I give him all the credit because of what you went through as you were sharing, I can, I can sense that there are listeners that are like, I want that, or I have a spouse that needs that. Um, cause I know that there are people that, like you said, you it's, it was years and they go through years of like improving kind of like what you went through, but not quite getting to that place where there's still things that are left. Um, so what can you say to those listeners where they've, there's, there's some improvement and they can actually hold a job or, you know, they can hold a part-time job, or there's like little pieces of growth and measurement. What can you say to them to keep going and to have hope that complete healing is possible? Oh, jump in, jump, just jump in, like, just go for it. And here's, here's another key to healing <laughs> is pray for other people. Mm. so like like i we call it a chain my friend and i call it like a chain you know like you're building chains you know blocks of the chain and so like 
go get prayed for by that guy. Go get prayed by that evangelist. Go get prayed for by that pastor, whoever that, you know, go get prayed for by Heidi. Got it. Like just go do it and just take whatever God gives you. Even if, you know, you don't see a change and then turn around and pray for someone else who needs a healing, you know, like say, um, you know, the principles to healing. I mean, Hey, maybe you get prayed for, for one thing. Like one time I go to this Sozo thing some years ago, I'm like, I'm going to go here. I'm starting this youth ministry again. You know, it's 20, I think it was about 2010, 2011. And I go to the Sozo. I'm like, I'm going to get prayed for, for healing for PTSD. But here's the deal. Like I walked out of that, not healed a PTSD, but healed of migraines from a mm. traumatic brain injury I had from, and that's, that's from a shotgun blast next to my head inside my truck in Afghanistan in 09. And, and so like, that was a kid negligently, dis- a Marine negligently discharged that. So that's, you know, that affected me too. So I go in for one thing, but God heals me in this other, I'm going to take oh, it. Wow. You know, if, if, if I've got a broken leg and I, I get prayed for, for healing for my broken leg, but I don't get my, my leg healed but I get some emotion healed. Mm -hmm. I'm going to praise God, right? So just start praising God, start doing what Jesus did yourself, turn around and build, you know, keep building those chains, those links in the chain. Hey, I've had this, I've had this milestone. I've had that marker. I prayed for this person. I've seen God do that. Just keep going for it. You know? And um, I mean, there's, there's healing in the atonement. Hold on to the promises, Mm -hmm. just hold on to the promises. That is so good. Yeah. He works in steps and he gives us what we're ready for and what we're able to receive. It's his timing. So we can't always control. We can't, we can't ever control that, but you were on fire and you were going yeah. after it. Oh yeah. Still every day, every day. Yeah. Oh, this is so good. Um, I would love it if you could pray for our listeners. Um, even you kind of just shared a little nugget there about the TBI. Can you also throw that in there and, and pray for that as well? Um, because yeah. I think some people don't have, they kind of, there's their God is too small. And so they don't know that God can be this big, that he can actually heal all these things. And it's not weird. It's what, what he says and what he can do. Um, so even just increasing that capacity of like, there is hope. I can actually get healed of these things. And it's not weird. It's real, but our little brains don't understand it. Our little brains can't get it because we're human, but God can. Oh you know, yeah. I'd love to be an honor, Heidi. Yeah. So Holy Spirit come everybody listening or watching, however they're consuming this content, may your anointing be upon it 24 seven in Jesus name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Have your way right now, God, in the name of Jesus. I pray that everybody's eyes will see you right now, that whatever their their trauma was, that they will see you, Jesus. So right now, may you walk into people's minds. May you walk into people's hearts. May they see you right there saying that you love them. Holy Spirit, we pray for your healing upon people's minds, upon their spirits, upon their souls in Jesus' name. May PTSD be healed. May tormenting thoughts be gone in Jesus' name. Uh, Lord Jesus, may depression be lifted off in Jesus' name. Even now, I just see those things just flying all off the people Mm -hmm. right now in Jesus' name. They're flying off, just gone in Jesus' name. And for anybody who's got traumatic brain injury, whether it's from a horse accident, whether it's from a car accident, whether it's from combat, what, whatever this traumatic brain injury is from, God, in Jesus' name, bring healing. We pray the migraines gone in Jesus' name. We pray for uh, those intrusive thoughts to be away and gone in Jesus' name. And we pray for the peace that surpasses all understanding upon them. We thank you, Lord, for your healing virtue. We thank you, Jesus, for your Holy Spirit. Mm. And may... Even now, I just see the Holy Spirit as a dove, mm-hmm. a very large dove resting on your listeners, Heidi. I just, you know, it's, it's beautiful. He's just, it's, I see your podcast logo and I see the, the huge Holy Spirit dove, the dove of the Holy Spirit sitting and resting on it. So on all your listeners, may they all feel the presence of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Um, Jesus, you just have fun with Jesus all the time. It's so good. Thank you so much. 
And your podcast is this, this is what your podcast is filled with. Um, so can you let our listeners know, like, where can they find you and how can they get more information about you? Um, the podcast is adventures in the spirit, correct. But their website, what else, what else is going on with you? How can they find you? Oh, that's a good question. So yeah, the website is great. Firebornministries.com. Mm-hmm. The podcast is with charisma, just like yours, Heidi. So they could find it anywhere. They listen to podcasts, Apple, Spotify, Google, player FM, uh, Try to get it on YouTube. <laughs> um, you know, we've got other resources available, free downloads for people to activate the prophetic. I do have, a, you know, a healing course, um, which, you know, people could go through. That's on charisma, charismacourses.com. So they learn how to pray for others t- to be healed. Is that what they learn? Oh, oh yeah. What, um, yeah. I've got numerous things on whether it's uh how to prophesy over people how to pray healing power evangelism um or you know people are interested in being Mm -hmm. trained in this we offer a a ordination or you know mentoring platform track and things like that for the ministry but you know really all that is just you know it's from jesus it's all about him you know i really just want to build relationship with people so that they can go do what jesus did you know my heart is just to equip them so um, however they find us, it's a God thing, mm-hmm. you know, Heidi, I want them, I want them to, you know, get to know you and grow with you too. I mean, just this, this has been a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, this is a lot of fun. So my family, we're, we're surrendered to the media missions, media ministry. And, mm-hmm. you know, we do a lot of traveling, and mm-hmm. we do webinars, all kinds of stuff, but you know, we just, if someone listens to this podcast say hey i listened to you on heidi i'm like oh man heidi's awesome you know just come you know let's have coffee or something (laughs) you are the real deal this is so good like i god is absolutely is working through you and operating through you like he's all over you thank you so much for coming on the show and thank you for our listeners for listening it's an honor, Heidi. Thank you so very much for the invitation. I will have you on adventures. So let everybody know I'm going to have Heidi on adventures in the spirit. It's going to be awesome. Awesome. I would love that. Thank you so much, Jared. Mm-hmm.